I cannot believe it is this time of the month already. We are already at the end of March. And as promised, I am doing a monthly favorites. I am wearing all of the makeup products on my face today. And I've got a couple of books I want to talk about and some TV shows. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So the first makeup item I want to talk about is actually a lip balm. It is the e.l.f. Ride or Die Lip Balm. This is the clear one. It's in Mighty Mint. I also have one that's, um, I think it's called Tough Cookie. It's kind of like a brownie nude shade. It's like a sheer brown shade. I don't mind that one, but I definitely prefer the clear one just because I can put makeup on top of it without having to wipe it off or I can use it when I'm not wearing any makeup at all. It's really, really nice, nice and thick and moisturizing and I'm enjoying this a lot. This darn Michigan weather keeps changing and it's got me feeling not the greatest today. I'm very congested. My throat feels dry. Welcome to spring, right? <clears throat> Next is mm, the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer in the brightener shade this i think in my next video i'm going to put this do a side by side comparison with the becca under eye corrector i like this more it has a little sponge tip applicator you just twist it and it clicks up so much easier to apply than the becca that's in a pot i don't have to dip my finger or my sponge or brush in it i can just dot it right on my eye blend it out and be done It's also much thinner than the Becca. It's not as glowy, which honestly I prefer because sometimes if you get too much of the Becca on, it will just look like too much. It looks heavy and makeup-y. I have never had this issue, that issue with this corrector and I am honestly obsessed with this and it's a fraction of the price of the Becca. I think I talked about this in my last video about how I had wanted to try like the Bobbi Brown color corrector or maybe the Charlotte Tilbury one, but I decided to go with this based off of Emily Noel's recommendation and I am so pleased with this. I don't think I'm going to try one of those other two and this has been on the market for a long time so I know it's not going anywhere and I'm, I mean knock on wood, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> I don't think Maybelline's going anywhere either. So I'm very, very pleased with this. Next up is the Urban Decay Brow Blade. Um, today I used just the ink stain part with my normal LA Girl Shady Slim Brow Pencil. I did just the ink stain first and then I filled in the rest with my brow pencil and I love the way it looks. I think it looks so good. And my brows look really, really nice. I am very pleased with this. I don't mind the pencil on the other side. I just think that my LA Girl is a better shade match for me and that's what I like. I mean, that's why I keep repurchasing this one. I probably repurchased this like seven times. 
just because I love the shade match and I really think that this it's a better shade match than the pencil on the brow blade side but I love the ink stain I love the effect it creates also on the topic of brows um, I've been loving this Milani clear brow gel I've been using it when I use the um, Urban Decay just to set my brows in place so that they don't move I mean the color doesn't fade because of the stain and also I just love the way the LA girl wears on me but um to hold the brows themselves in place and make sure they don't go anywhere. I've been loving this Milani Clear Brow Gel. It's really good and it's not very expensive. The foundation that I'm wearing today is this M Cosmetics Daydream Cushion Tint. I have the shade Cloud Dream Fair Light. I used this in my anniversary makeup video for the first time and it is Gorgeous. I have not been able to stop using this this month. Um, today I actually applied it with my Rare Beauty brush. I started with one of my It Cosmetics brushes, um, but this one is just a little bit denser and I really like the shape of this one. And it applied beautifully. I do like using the um, sponge, the little applicator that it comes with. Mine is very dirty. I need to wash it when I'm needing to do it quickly. But the brush gives you such nice coverage. I am obsessed with it. Another product that I have been loving this month, and I really think it does make a difference with how my makeup wears and the hydration levels throughout the day is the Hard Candy Hydrating Primer. This is definitely, definitely a dupe for the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. I have not tried the Milk Makeup one, but this is like the exact same thing, guys. It looks exactly the same. It performs so hair is driving me nuts today it performs so well and it says 12 hour makeup grip I definitely think that you can get even more than 12 hour wear out of it I when I wear my makeup for work I am typically wearing it for anywhere from 10 to 16 hours and it usually will look pretty decent by the end of the night and this like it definitely makes a difference and i would definitely repurchase this one it's very good hard candy is sold at walmart and this product i mean they're not very expensive i think this is like eight to ten dollars at the most not very expensive at all and it's definitely worth it i have been using this bronzer non-stop this month you can't even really tell It doesn't look like I've even hardly made a dent in it. This is the Milani Silky Matte Bronzer. It's I have it in the shade Sunlight 01. It smells like butter bronzer, you guys. It is so beautiful. I love this so much. I think this is my favorite bronzer. 
it has replaced my butter bronzer as my favorite for sure. Butter bronzer is so old that the compact is now broken. Um, I've made quite a big dent in my butter bronzer. This shade is just, it's a better shade match for me. I like the way it performs. Um, it lasts all day. It smells good. Butter bronzer smells just like this. Um, honestly, it's just, it's just the shade and then the way it performs and the way it looks when it's applied. It's beautiful. I cannot stop using it and I love the packaging. I don't mind the butter bronzer packaging. They changed the color of it recently, like they repackaged it, but it's in the exact same type of packaging. It's just a different color. I love this one more. I think it's better. I have been wearing this blush non-stop this month. It is the e.l.f. Putty Blush in Tahiti. Um... I had it on today and then with my eyes and everything, I decided to put my ColourPop blush sticks in Aloha over top of it. I do have a clip of me applying it. I will put it on here. This was just a little bit too pinky for the look that I was going for today. And I needed something a little bit peachy orange to go on top of it. I love the way it looks though. It looks so pretty. Um, this is such a great cream blush. It lasts amazing all day. Even wearing a mask, it dries down really, really nicely. Almost to like a powder finish. And the color is beautiful. Like even just swatching it on my hand, it feels a little powdery. Just swatching it. It's so nice. I am obsessed with it. Cannot stop using it. Um, I do think I like it a little bit more than the Milani cream blush, just because it's a little bit drier and the Milani is a lot more creamier. They both wear really, really well. But I think because the elf is a little bit drier it doesn't look dry when you apply like it looks fresh on the face it looks dewy and glowy but it kind of dries down a little bit more so it wears a little bit better than the milani one in my opinion i feel like this is cheating a little bit but since i got the rare beauty highlighter which has only been like a week or so i have not been able to put it down it is so so pretty it's hard to tell with the glowy blush on and everything that I'm wearing underneath of it. But it's just a really, really pretty, subtle, natural glow. I will definitely insert a clip of me applying it here. It's just, it's so good and it's so pretty and I am very, very pleased. It's not like chunky or glitter either. It's just a nice glow. Very, very. Pearly, it's a pearly glow. 
I love that. Especially on more like natural makeup look days. It's beautiful. <clears throat> I love it. Last makeup item I want to share with you guys for today. The Maybelline Sky High Mascara. I do think that you need it needs to be open for a couple of days before it reaches like its full potential. The first time I remember using it, it didn't apply the way I wanted to right away. But after being open for a couple of days, it is fantastic. It is all I'm wearing on my lashes today. It is kind of hard to tell when you're wearing liner, but I did, I think the video that I first tried this, I wasn't wearing liner and you can really, really see the volume in that one. This wears so well on me throughout the day. It doesn't flake, smudge, none of that. Definitely my favorite, definitely my favorite mascara that I have found so far besides my CoverGirl Exhibitionist mascara. It's just so good. I have heard mixed reviews about it, but I definitely think that if this is your kind of mascara, you like a little bit more of a wet formula, you like a lot of length. I mean, it definitely, it definitely gives nice length. If that's the kind of mascara you're into, I definitely think this is worth a shot. Like I said, you it does need to be open for a couple of days before it gets really good. I don't know why mascaras are like that. Like there are some mascaras that you will use the first time and you're kind of like meh about them and then they're open for a while and you're like, oh my gosh, this is actually a really, really good mascara. Don't understand, don't know why. Maybe they're just too wet when you first open them. I have no idea. But I definitely think it's worth the hype and it's worth a shot if that is the kind of mascara that you like. Okay, on to a couple of more like lifestyle -y things. My boyfriend and I finished watching The Good Place in March. We finished the last season. Finally, after it was on Netflix for forever, I think we just didn't want to finish watching it because we knew it was the last season and we didn't want it to be over. I cried. <laughs> like, I think I talked about it last year in my June favorites. I think it's the only other favorites video I've done besides my February. Um, it is such a sweet, heartwarming show and it's so funny. <laughs> I love it so much. I want to cry just thinking about it because man, that last season killed me. Um, it was so good though. Like I definitely recommend watching it if you haven't already seen it. I don't think it's 100% family friendly. There is some more mature jokes made some more some like innuendos and stuff but it's not like i mean they can't curse because they're in heaven so they don't actually there's no swearing in it actual swearing in it it's probably something you could watch with older kids definitely i would not recommend watching it with younger kids it just it depends i mean it would just depend on your kids and your preferences with what you let them watch um we also finished watching as a family the netflix series a series of important events a few months ago, we watched the movie at my friend's house with the kids and my son was obsessed with it. He loved the movie so much. We started watching the show and both kids were just glued to the screen every single episode we watched. It was so good. And I hadn't read those books probably since middle school. I don't remember when the last one came out and I barely remember like the last four books watching the show I was definitely like oh yeah I vaguely remember this happening I kind of know what's going on but it made me want to read the books again and I am almost 30 years old and I'm like why do I want to read these again they're just so good anyways if you have not seen a series of important events or you're looking for a show to watch with your family my kids are seven and almost six and they loved it definitely would recommend even for a little bit younger age group I need more coffee um, I read, well, I finished one book in March and I, I was reading another one. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, the book I finished is A Whole New World. Who is it by? Hold on. Let me look really quick. A Whole New World by Liz Braswell. It was free on Prime Reading, so I was able to download it and read it. I gave it four stars out of five. I thought it was pretty good. Um, the, it's part of the Twisted Tales series 
that Disney has put out. So you, they take a well-known Disney story, like this one was Aladdin, and kind of, you know, what happened, what would have happened if like the main story arc in, this, in the story hadn't happened. Like this one was, what would have happened if Aladdin hadn't gotten the lamp? He's in the cave, like the first few chapters up until the Cave of Wonders were almost word for word like the book, the book, like the movie, um, which I like, I enjoyed that. That's one of the things I loved about the live action Aladdin too was it was so close to the animated original movie, but also had its own spin on things and the music in that is so good. Um, so up until I don't want to spoil it for you in case you are interested in reading it or you're a Disney nerd like me um, but up until the Cave of Wonders is almost exactly like the animated movie and then in the Cave of Wonders Abu and the carpet do not get the lamp from Jafar when the cave is closing in Jafar gets the lamp and it's what would have happened then very interesting story I liked Aladdin and Jasmine's character development in this book a lot. They had a lot, like Jasmine was not just a pretty face. She had a lot of growth and a lot of character and she was definitely like a strong role model. And I, oh my god, why am I tearing up? Talking about Disney books, gosh. Um, and I loved the side characters that they introduced in the story and the role that they played in the story and it was just really really good I really <laughs> I enjoyed it like I said I gave it four stars out of five um the other book that I read I just it was not my style of book I could not finish it there has been two books that I read this year that I just could not finish and it was the radium girls by Kate Moore it was also free on Prime Reading a few months ago. I downloaded it. I thought it sounded really, really interesting. I saw the trailer for the movie on Netflix and I'm like, oh my gosh, this looks so good. So I started reading it. It was just not my, not my style of book, not my cup of tea. It has such good reviews that I wanted to love it so much, but I could not read it. I could not get into it. It was so hard for me and I love reading a lot but it, I just I couldn't it was too much like a textbook for me I just did not enjoy it um, at all the book I'm currently reading is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng I think it is it's just NG I need to look up how to pronounce that I am only about a quarter of the way done with that but so far I'm really enjoying it I will hopefully be able to update you next month on how I liked it and everything like that. So yeah, I think that is everything I have for you guys today. Let me know what your favorite things have been this month, whether it's makeup, skincare, hair care, books, what are you reading right now? What kind of shows are you watching? Um, currently, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, my boyfriend and I are now watching Supernatural again. We have been watching it pretty much since we started dating. Um, we will watch a few seasons and then take a break and then we'll watch a few seasons and take a break. It's just so long. And sometimes it gets so dry and I'm just like, oh, how many times are they gonna die? But I love it. I really, really do love Supernatural. Um, my son really wants to watch it, but I think he's still a little bit too young. It's, it's a little mature for him, I think. He needs to be a little bit older before he can watch it. But I'm always looking for new shows to watch. Personally, for myself, I'm trying to watch The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. And I also love re-watching and binging Gilmore Girls. So those are the two shows that I am kind of watching right now when I have the time, when I'm not working or doing remote learning or watching YouTube or filming YouTube. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. I bought Animal Crossing New Horizons and I am in love with it. Oh my gosh. Why did I wait so long? Well, I guess we didn't get a switch until Christmas. We got a switch for Christmas and I bought Animal Crossings and I'm obsessed with it. It is so much fun. I love it. I was going to say, well, when I'm not playing Animal Crossing, so I, that's when I watch Netflix by myself, which doesn't happen very often. Anyways, that is really all I have for this video today, guys. Please 
leave a like if you enjoyed this at any point in the video. It really does help me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in my next one. Have a good day.